Marine reacts to SCP-963, also known as Dr. Bright. It's object class Euclid by the Exploring Series. As always, I'm going to be posting a link to the original video and channel down in the description below. So go ahead and make sure that you check that out. So here's my big conundrum with this SCP. Uh, specifically referring back to the Site-13 video that I did a couple days ago. They ended up seeing a body called Dr. that had Dr. Bright on an intake, right? And what happened was the, uh, the Exploring Series said someone who can like jump from body to body due to an amulet right and so without trying to spoil too much to myself before actually seeing the video firsthand i went to the scp website to kind of see like is it is the is the 963 the amulet or is it dark to bright so i went there and from what i see it seems to be the amulet and just seems like whoever is holding it would be considered 963 as well or maybe like a dash I didn't read too much in it, I only really just saw the picture and the title and the object class. I didn't want to see the rest because I wanted to get a first hand view from like a video perspective. Also I've been getting tons and tons of people really commenting, you have to watch Dr. Bright, you've got to watch 50 things that Dr. Bright isn't allowed to do, so I'm like, okay. I'm going to have them back to back, kind of, within the same top five, that way it still ends up being fresh in my head. And for those of you asking to react to when day breaks. Uh, part two don't worry it's in the top five it's gonna get there in a couple days None, nonetheless before we get into the actual SCP video don't forget to like subscribe it really does help me out a lot hit that notification bell right there so you get notified every time I do upload sometimes I upload twice a day typically working on them in the mornings and then releasing them in the late afternoon to late evening that way when you all get off work you enjoy these videos at your leisure so without further ado let's go ahead and see what SCP-963 or Dr. Bright is all about. Dr. Bright. Throughout this series, we've discussed monsters, aliens, phenomena, apocalyptic scenarios, and multiple shadowy organizations. But we haven't really talked about the specific people that work for those organizations. Most of the material you read about a group, such as the SCP Foundation, contains scores of faceless doctors, agents, and D class personnel. But there are sometimes notable individuals. What would cause someone to work and continue working for an organization like the SCP Foundation? What would that kind of work do to their psyche? This video will look at perhaps the most famous individual working for the Foundation, Dr. Jack Bright, as well as other members of his family involved with the group. Jack's parents, Adam and Evelyn, were working for the SCP Foundation. Adam and Evelyn. It's kind of reminiscent of Adam and Eve, right? Hmm. That's making me think of other things, but I think that would be way too much of a stretch, so I'm not even going to say them. Foundation sometime during the 1800s. Adam as a junior researcher, and Evelyn as a medical assistant. Although Adam was apparently one of the founding members of the foundation, if you follow this canon. Together, they had five children. Mikkel, Jack, TJ, Claire, and Sarah. Sarah was stillborn, and Adam, desperate to bring her back to life, utilized several SCPs. One of these was SCP-590, TJ Bright, one of his sons. TJ was born with the incredible gift of being able to heal any injury or ailment, both physical and mental, that an individual might have, simply by touching them. The downside of this ability is that TJ receives the injury or ailment upon himself, experiencing all of the pain, after effects, and mental aberrations that the subject was experiencing. Is he able to heal himself, though? I mean, yeah, I would assume not. So he used his son to help his daughter, and... Wouldn't that mean that at least two of their kids then have the SCP capabilities or an anomalous abilities? Interesting. When he was young, he could choose to consciously activate this ability, but after puberty, it became an involuntary effect. In conjunction with other SCPs, Adam Bright used TJ's ability to bring his daughter back to life, but she was taken into Foundation custody immediately afterwards. And so Wait, if she was stillborn, then he just literally brought her back to life. So this dude 
in a sense, can beat death for someone else. That's from what what I just got from it. Soon was designated SCP-321. TJ was also taken into Foundation custody because of this, becoming SCP-590. And by this point, Mikkel was already working for them. SCP-321 was found to be capable of recuperating from any injury at five times the normal rate of a human, believed to be caused by an overabundant production of stem cells. Additionally, 321 has continually aged and grown since her rebirth, and is currently 3.1 meters tall and weighs approximately 110 kilograms. She shows no signs of stopping growth, and at a certain point her heart was reaching the limits of its circulation capabilities. An artificial heart was created and implanted into 321's body, allowing her continued growth and existence. Despite her age being at least over 100 at this point, her intellectual capabilities are similar to that of an infant, taking months to learn a simple task, and she's unable to speak more than nonsensical noises. After being taken into Foundation custody, her father, junior researcher Adam Bright, requested that she be removed from SCP status, but he was denied. Later, Personnel Director Adam Bright again requested she be removed from SCP status, and it was again denied. Much later, Site Director Adam Bright suggested that they can learn nothing more from SCP-321, and that her SCP designation be removed, but again he was denied. I just want to say this is getting very depressing. I don't know why, I mean, I don't know if this is just the way this picture is drawn, but the mechanical parts... I don't know why they're there. If she has the capacity of a like a child, right? Like right now, like me mental capacity of a child right now, when they said that it would take a lot of time for her to get one task or like to remember one test, it seems like she's, I mean, obviously they have her classified as safe. I mean, I, I just, I mean, I know she would be considered an anomalous because she was brought back from the dead because she was a stillborn, but you just got to feel for this Adam Wright. Because he's going there, he's going back and forth, trying to get his daughter out of there. He knows that she's not really posing a harm to anybody. And then he's getting rejected every time. So I'm assuming he's going to do something drastic. Because he's trying to do it like in a way where he's doing it, I guess, by the books or by the rules. But I feel like that's not going to work. And I feel like he's going to start to maybe take matters into his own hands. We'll continue to see how this goes on because if you think about it Adam used TJ's abilities to bring her back and I don't know if he knew that or this must have been where uh, TJ was still able to use his, his, his abilities uh, consciously so that he can activate it but he would still take on the damage I don't know what kind of damage he would take on from bringing back a stillborn and but I mean main thing is I'm curious if Adam knew what the repercussions would be, at least for TJ as well, so. Finally, 05-12, Adam Bright, made a note that SCP-321 is to be decommissioned and returned to her family immediately, but he was shut down for a final time. He was told that she was not now, nor has ever been, his daughter, and that if he attempted this again, the council would remove him. In reaction to this, Adam Bright resigned from the 05 council, an unprecedented action as it's typically a lifetime position. By this point, Mikkel Bright was also on the O5 Council, and Jack had moved up in ranks as well. Is the whole family so the whole family's in the foundation? Mikael was also on there, which was I'm assuming his son. It was his first son that was on there. And yeah. And then Jack? Jack, yeah, because Jack, Jack is going to be the, the Dr. Bright, Jack Bright, that we're going to see. Hmm. Interesting how they're all kind of in the foundation and such a high, high level as well. At some point, SCP-590, TJ, had accumulated enough injuries to leave him bedridden and on life support, unable to breathe on his own. A single dose of SCP-500 brought him back to full health, however and his abilities are used on Foundation personnel of researchers and above, as an alternative to utilizing SCP-500. 
By the insistence of Jack, TJ was used to cure several cases of mental retardation, reducing him to the mental level of a three-year-old. Jack likely did this to mentally protect his brother from understanding what the Foundation was doing to him. TJ now spends most of his time watching children's television shows and coloring, although he does have his moments of surprising lucidity. Dude, I couldn't even imagine being in TJ's shoes right now. I mean, you would have this ability. I mean, if only he can control it. But just having this ability where you're going to take on not only the injuries, but if you were in a scenario where you can control, like whether or not you're going to accidentally touch someone, but the fact that they're doing this, I mean, I guess they're running experiments, making him touch people to see, like, how much he can cure, like, mental conditions, physical harm and all that. And then the fact that Jack had them do an experiment where he did it uh, with kids with uh, mental disabilities when they were young. So now he has that too right now. And the fact that he did that because he didn't want, I guess, his mind to break or like know how he said that he didn't want them to know what they're doing to him. It's, this is just a de <laughs> this is depressing, man. Which brings us to Jack Bright himself, who followed in his parents' and brother's footsteps and also joined the SCP Foundation. Claire, meanwhile, who possesses the ability to see into the future, would go on to join the Serpent's Hand. Like Does it... Does every one of them have an SCP capability? Counter organization to the SCP Foundation focused on spreading awareness of the paranormal. Jack joined after his brother TJ went into Foundation custody and became a junior researcher of good standing. He was eventually assigned to researching SCP 963, a white gold amulet containing a ruby surrounded by 13 diamonds. 963 was discovered in the apartment of an individual who apparently committed suicide surrounded by supernaturally related books, and was brought into the Foundation since it was found to be incapable of being damaged. Later that year, SCP-076, Abel, breached containment, leading to a large number of casualties. Dr. Bright happened to be walking past 076's containment unit at the time, transporting the amulet by hand, and was killed by Abel. A few days later, a D-class assigned to clean up the rubble picked up 963. A noticeable change went over the D-class, who began referring to himself as Jack Bright. Okay, so now we're getting into the body jumping. So, as soon as he got killed, I'm assuming, I don't know if it's like a soul or what have you, but... Whatever he is went into the amulet. But then again, that's kind of weird. Because they said that they found the dude who killed himself in the apartment with it. So wouldn't his body be in it? I mean, unless... I mean, because they said the guy killed himself. And with Jack, he didn't kill himself. He got killed by Abel. I don't know. Um, so, But all I know now is that he's most likely in the amulet. And now whenever somebody puts him on, I guess he kind of takes over. I don't know if it's a permanent takeover or just when you, he, they have the amulet on, but we'll find out. Upon removal of the amulet from his possession, all of his higher brain functions ceased until the amulet was returned. Apparently... The okay, so his brain does cease to function on the person until it's returned. I'm going to send me back to containment. Um, so... All right, so it's only so long as they have the amulet. The individual that created the amulet hoped to gain immortality by binding his soul to the amulet so that he could possess whomever touched it. His ritual failed, however, due to the simple fact that he killed himself to initiate it rather than being killed by some other force. Jack Bright activated the amulet correctly when he was killed while holding on to it, binding his soul to it. When the D-Class picked it up, it overwrote his mind with the mind of Dr. Bright, including all of his memories. This allows Dr. Bright to be functionally immortal, as long as someone eventually touches the amulet, whether it be a human or some other creature or animal. Since hmm. the amulet is invulnerable to damage, the only way to prevent this 
would be to keep the amulet locked away. But since Jack Bright is a loyal member of the Foundation, he's allowed to continue to operate. However, there is a side effect of 963. If a subject maintains contact with the amulet for 30 days, their consciousness becomes a duplicate of Dr. Bright's, and removal of the amulet does nothing. Since this would allow Dr. Bright to make potentially unlimited copies of his mind, sanctions were put into place to prevent this, although so far Dr. Bright has not attempted to break this rule. So he could technically, if he wanted to, I mean they say that he did it, he, he could have his own little army, right? If he were to keep, I mean, obviously it would be one person every 30 days. So, can't hold it on for a long time. I wonder if the person, the, the body he takes over, is actually seeing what's going on. And like, they're, but I mean, obviously they can't control their own functions. But I, I wonder if they're conscious during it. Or if to them it's just like a quick close of the eyes, open the eyes, and the amulet's off of you type deal. So... So far, Dr. Bright has found no way to release himself from 963, not for lack of trying. On the flip side, the Foundation actually spent some time trying to recreate 963, eventually resulting in 963-2. All information on 963-2 has been expunged, so it's unclear exactly what it does, but it's likely not good. Dr. Bright has so far jumped between countless bodies, including male and female humans, animals, and SCPs. SCPs? I wonder what would happen if they put on some of the more dangerous ones. And then, hmm, like 96, 682, you know, things of that nature. Well, Dr. Bright's loyalty and intellect, combined with his immortality, have certainly been a benefit to the Foundation it's also taken its toll on Bright's psyche. A tale that demonstrates some of the consequences of 963 is the executions of Dr. Bright, although keep it in mind it does take place in the broken masquerade canon where information about anomalies is public. In it, Bright is part of a team operating in the Middle East where they are suddenly captured by armed terrorists. They possess knowledge of Bright in 963 and proceeded to kill the team one by one. However, they started with Bright, and then put the amulet on another member of the team, so that they were killing Bright each time. The rest of the team waited in horror as their associated minds were wiped and they were killed. The tale gives us a sense of how much Bright resents his condition, and in turn grows to hate himself. A consistent theme across a number of tales is Bright's deep-seated desire for release from 963 and his inability to do so. The tale Code Brown describes a Bright family reunion that occurs because of Claire's death while working for the Serpent's Hand. We see that the Bright family is large, including children, grandchildren, cousins, and so on. Practically none of them seem to get along very well. Mikkel seems to have fathered a large number of children in his younger days, now collectively known as the Unnumbered Brood. Evelyn, Jack's mother, also makes an appearance, and is said to sometimes be referred to as the Mother of Monsters, as she apparently spends her time creating creatures. It's clear that the Bright family is not a typical one, each with their gifts and quirks. Dr. Bright has developed a reputation over the years of being eccentric, to say the least, but it's fair to say that he hasn't had the most normal of lives. Between the tragedies associated with his family and his own unfortunate situation, Jack has suffered more than any one person should. He ultimately believes in the Foundation's methods and goals, despite what they've done to him and his family, and continues to work for them, becoming the site director of a number of sites. He so far has not reached the rank of O5, perhaps due to his mental state, or perhaps because the Council would rather not have what is technically an SCP sitting amongst them. I hope that this video has provided some greater degree of insight into the backstory of Dr. Bright, who is certainly not a normal member of the Foundation, but is nonetheless an integral part of it. Alright, let's talk about that for a minute. Now. I was kind of immediately under the impression that he was going to have some form of superpower. 
just because I mean that's my natural always thing but it seemed like their family in general tends to have a lot of anomalous things going on with them but also um, obviously the whole family as far as I know is part of the SCP foundation except minus the sister who was part of the serpent hands and finally cleared it up with uh, the amulet B963 and then Dr. Bright also just kind of being like a ni like 963 as well or I guess 963-1 but this was a lot more depressing than I thought it was gonna be uh, specific TJ literally probably the worst life out of all of them as far as I know and then you got Jack who I feel like slowly he would start to lose his mind considering he doesn't have an original body now and he can take control of SCPs he can get, take control of animals as well as well as people so really didn't have too much to say with uh, Dr. Bright uh, I did hear there's quite a bit of other documents that have him in them so I'm gonna be checking those out as well just because I feel like I want to know more because this guy's been commented on so many of my videos to go check him out. Uh, specifically also, 50 things he's not allowed to do, which is going to be coming up in a couple days. So really just, I'm a, more more excited to see what else I can find out about this guy because he's one of those uh, SCP members that's like really, like one of those, I guess if you want to call it like a main character or someone who's just very well known. So, I'm excited to check more of him out, and that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, really does help me out a lot. Uh, hit the dislike button if you didn't like it, really helps me improve the channel. If you're curious to see what videos are coming up next, just go ahead and check the description down below. You're going to see a little list of about five. Top to bottom, that's going to be how I view them. Until then, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.